that's James's meal for today and I'm gonna have to move because I'm getting splashed and uh, I made a pretty good meal for James I'm pretty excited about that this Full one looks scary I, I peeked Dave. in on that one yeah yeah it actually it was better than I thought so it got the top of the stack I really really didn't think it would I I was thinking about not even picking it up from the uh, from the library mm. really, because well it's, it looks pretty silly I mean it's like uh, it's a story about a couple women who they're climbers they like doing the extreme sport sort of climbing yeah it's usually a guy thing but there would be some women that be into that mm -hmm. yeah. If my body could take it, I would totally do it. Is that true? I, mm -hmm. I, the, the, the semi-extreme hiking we did last year was plenty and enough for me. Yeah, that's enough for me now too. I never want to do anything like that. Either. No. No, I, I am very happy with what we managed to get done. Mm -hmm. So, I have no. No regrets. I don't mind that I haven't made it to the top of, what is this? 47 meter. It's a tower. Uh, I, um, I once knew a family, they used to call, a, call these big, the big tall towers uh, alien sticks. And, and uh, the, one, the mother would tell her children that if they were bad, she was going to tie them to the alien sticks so that they could get taken away by the aliens. Um, but anyway, they didn't believe it. It was just a big joke. Okay, 2,000 foot radio tower it says. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean it's a movie, you're watching a couple girls climb a tower, and then you're watching a couple girls being stranded up on top of a tower, and you're, you're like, okay, um, how can this possibly be an interesting movie? It's supposed but, to be 2,000 feet? Yeah, it's a big tower. Oh, yeah. And um, yet you're watching it, and somehow the time passes, and they did a, they did a good job. I mean, they didn't have a lot to work with there, but they pulled it off. Whereas with all eyes, this story should be redone because there's a story there. It's a good one, but the acting was not good, and there were a lot of things that need, uh, you know, there needs to be a little bit of tweaking with the story, whatever, and. Um, but this could could have been really great, and it didn't end up making it to the top of the stack. It, and I mean, they had way more to work with here, but they didn't pull it off. Lucky day. Now this has some um, actors that you might recognize, like Crispin Glover, which honestly I've never cared I've never cared for him, but um, but many do. So I. I, I didn't enjoy it. In any case, I I thought it was kind of silly and whatever. Stop but it, I first when I heard, it's kind of funny because at first when I heard Chris McGlover is doing a French accent, I'm like, that does not sound real. But then as it turns out, that's a part of his character. He's not supposed to have a real French accent. So whatever. That I guess that kind of worked in that way. But still... I don't know. It just didn't work for me. Yeah, he's a bad guy, but honestly, he's, he seemed like a good guy playing a bad guy. He doesn't really seem like a bad guy, even when he's playing a bad guy. I don't know. It just didn't work for me. So that's all I have to review today. Do you have anything, James? Do you like that I put apple with your salad, or have you gotten? I haven't back got yet? to it. It'll, see, it'll be plenty fine. James I mean, hasn't not been had able apples and salads before. Yeah. I just see who this Christian Glover is. Crispin. Um, Crispin Glover. See, yeah. I don't even know who this is. You don't recognize him? He's been in lots of stuff. I think I do. So. Mm -hmm. I know. In any case, James hasn't been able to eat apples lately because his gums have been hurting. Hello. And so I thought, well, what if I grate it? So I, it basically almost chewed his food for him. Oh, that's the, what that the is right there, right? Yeah. That's it. There you go. Because so, apples, apples are with really cheap. So you can get them they, the um, 
the big eight pound bags of, uh, what, what do they call them? They have a funny name for it, but anyway, they're the no name ones that are, they made a nice little cute name for it, I can't remember. Anyway, apples. Naturally imperfect, that's it. It's one yeah, that's right. Very good marketing. And for a no name pro product, right? But you can get the apples, $8 for an eight pound bag. So, wow. And I mean, you never know what variety you're going to get, but I've stuck at Lucky. They've been good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, apples go uh, together with a, a lot of different things. They go well in salads, go well with pie shells. They go well, as you found out, with uh, peanut butter. All yes. of peanut butter. Unfortunately, I discovered that, and it's. I must have gained some weight last and week. And according to some people, uh, uh, who are not vegetarians, uh, they go with uh, sucking pigs. But uh, well, they go with everything. So, like, if you need a little bit of sweetener on your food, why go for honey if you could put a little bit of grated apple with it or whatever? Just like stuff. Anyway, and anyway, a good trick I found for stir fries is um, just use salt. I used to use, buy uh, pay more for soy sauce, and then I, I realized, oh, I don't want to be eating soy sauce. And so then I thought, okay, well, I could get, um, well, what do you call it? I have some in the fridge. Tam tamari. Uh, I think that's right. So anyway, um, which we haven't even bothered to use because the salt's been working out so well. So I just put some salt with the stir fry or fried rice or whatever I'm making and it works just as well. So our, our stir fries have been pretty simple but delicious. So, what do I want to talk about? Oh. Ulysses. Oh, man. Have you been going through that again? I... I I've never realized how many times, I read it way back in the day, around 1980, when I took a course at the university. Then I've got, uh, started 1st of July 2017, finished, wow, 15th of July 2017, so I put it away in two weeks. And then started, uh, oh, before then, the year before, started 1st of July 2016 finished the 6th of August, so I put that away in a little over a month in 2016, then I put it away in 2017, and then uh, I, so that that would be been my second and third time through it, and then uh, started, I'm not sure when, but finished the 28th of February, 2023, so just a few days ago. Uh, now, I've got another copy of uh, a paperback of uh, James Joyce's Ulysses and I, I just realized that uh, I put a check mark there now what I do is I check the pages as I'm going through but I uh, put a check mark in I, I read it and uh, I'm almost through it again so what would that be one two three four five six times so I'm, I'm almost through it six times so I'm going to review this copy of it and uh, I, I, I've been through it, it was already pretty beaten up when I got hold of it second hand, but uh, it's seriously beaten up now. And when I find uh, the part that got lost... That's your second copy. He has one that it's in several pieces already. This is the one. No, we, there's one that's... I'll find it. It's okay. paperback. It's okay. in several pieces. Well, maybe I've read it more, even more, more times than yeah. six times. But... Uh, uh, it's worth reading, at least for me. Now, I, I know a lot of you folks are saying, this is the archetypal modernist novel, except maybe for remembrance of things past by Proust. And modernism, well, it's old-fashioned, despite its name. Well, that is funny, right? You get, like, a modern art or whatever, and then, then what do you call the next one? Well, I don't know if these guys really <laughs> call themselves modernists, no. You know, it, they're all supposed to be a uh, movement, you know. Uh, so um, that would include Dadaism and Surrealism 
and uh, but it's supposed to be at least in English literature it's supposed to be conservative uh, right-wing uh, putting people down with the learning and stuff like that well you know if you get put down by James Joyce's learning that's your own darn fault just learn more <laughs> learn more you stu <laughs> stupid 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 idiots I mean when 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 I first the first time I exposed myself to this stuff or it, it exposed it to me I was in high school and I'd read a review of uh, I don't know I, I think it was Abbey Road and uh, in Rolling Stone there would have been a I think a, a reissue of some Rolling Stone review. And they were talking about John Lennon looking Lee O'Nine on the cover. Big mane of hair, red hair. Kind of a little reddish to be a line. And uh, then they were saying it was something like Lennon at his Joycean best. So I'm going, okay, that probably has to do with James Joyce, right? So I went to the library, back when it was a real library here in Lethbridge, and a uh, different location, and they actually had books on the shelves, instead of uh, books in the uh, dumpster out the back. You can check these out here. Uh, it's got all sorts of uh, chemicals all spilled all over it. But you can check these out over them, but you can check these books out here. Check them out in a different kind of way. And uh, so I, I pulled down Finnegan's Wake and off the shelf, and I go. Oh. So I pulled off Ulysses, and I'm going. That's almost as bad, or it's hard to understand. So it was a little bit better when I got through university. Now, well, you know, like uh, 2016, 2017, I recovered from two stem cell therapies. How many? Uh, now this is only with some creative account. It's not that creative, and it's only some. 25 languages at university. Try that out, you flunky uh, university profs who've added two out of, out of your native language. <whistles> Whoopie ding. Woo! I don't know languages. Yeah, but you're not strutting around pretending as though you're superior to me. No. You and I are equals. There are lots of things that you do uh, that you're better at than me. But you got university profs swanning around, people with a doc, you know, doctors of philosophy and uh, doctors of medicine can't stand them as a group. There have been some uh, professors at the university who have been very, very nice and very, very generous with me. But as a group, you guys have got some problems. You guys, have, you, got, you guys are getting your comeuppance from me. 25 languages at university. And that's not including when I might moonlight. Lots and lots of languages outside of university. So, uh, maybe not the highest level of achievement, but when I hit Greek at university, I hit the ground running. I hit the ground sprinting because I started at the third level and the professor was very nice when I said can I take this this was before the course before the course started before the first class can I take this class as there had already been two preliminary classes for it 1000 and 1100 and this was well it was a lot higher than 1500 but uh, the third level and what he said very nicely was, you can take it, but not for credit. After that first class, he sidled up to me and he whispered, you can take it for credit. First class, or first exam, there were two, there were two midterms and a final. I got a B. Never been so proud of a B in my life, because what that told me was, James, my name's him, you taught yourself two layers of university great. But that's not the only language I've done that with. 
dozens and dozens of them. Dozens and dozens. So when it comes to, let's say Soren Kierkegaard, I was talking with the librarian today, he's a very nice guy. I was saying, yeah, I've read a little bit of Soren Kierkegaard in the original. And I've read a little in Danish. In the, something like the Fracture script, you know, that medieval kind of looking thing that uh, they uh, used to write German in. They kind of tried to revive it during the Nazi era. You can get stuff published in uh, Germany in the 30s, and it's got that Fracture script. That looks medieval. Looks very Wagnerian. And uh, then I was uh, joking around. I said, you know, like I, I've read uh, a little bit of Spinoza in the original Dutch. And what I was saying to the librarian was, you're supposed to say to me, I thought he wrote his stuff in Latin. Yeah, he wrote some stuff in Latin, but he, most of the stuff. But he did write some stuff in Dutch. And I've looked at both of those. Not all of the stuff. I can't go through everything for you guys. Do a little work on your own. I'm not going to sign you stuff. Do a little work. Because I'm tired of you guys strutting around. I'm not just talking about university profs. I'm talking about students of death and life or something like that. Uh, the ivory tower folks swanning around, thinking you know everything because you've got your blinkers on and you've uh, got a PhD or you're working on a PhD or whatever, or MA, and uh, you've just got your blinkers on and wow I see everything I see I see I can see I'm like the who late 1967 early 1968 I can see for miles and miles and my yeah but you know there's 360 degrees of vision this way and guess what this way too I can see for miles and miles and I can see through you for miles and miles. Anyway, modernist. What's that about? It's what I'd say if you, you you know you look at Yeats, modernist poet, so-called Ezra Pound, modernist poet. I think he styled himself as such, but. Whew, whew. And uh, T.S. Eliot, modernist poet, I think all of those guys were pretty thoroughly anti-Semitic. James Joyce. Who's the hero of this novel? It ain't Stephen Dedalus. It's kind of based on James Joyce's character when he was young. It's, the, it's Leopold Bloom. Or Virag, Dutch for flower. Well, not Dutch, Hungarian for flower, Virag. And what nationality? It's supposed to be based on a character that ran, it was very nice. Just uh, for one little episode of uh, James Joyce's life. Uh, James Joyce got into a little bit of trouble, I don't know, in the rough part of town in Dublin. And this hunter guy helped him out, a guy named Hunter. And it was rumored he was a Jewish. And so the big hero of this novel is a Jew. And he's got his problems. He's got his weaknesses. But he's a wonderful guy. In other words, he's something like a real character. He's not making him out to be... Uh, Joyce isn't making him out to be an angel or anything like that. But he's a wonderful guy. And you go through... I think if we went through every chapter, you'd run at one of the little themes is anti-Semitism. You got a guy in the second chapter who seems to be like, uh, I think his name is Deasy. And he's a, a school teacher, or uh, maybe more like a principal handling a school. And he makes an anti Semitic joke at, at the end of it, mm. at the end of the chapter. And on and on it goes. It's not, it's not hammered at you, it's just these little points of black light of anti-Semitism in Irish society and by extension Catholic society but by extension in Western society so what's this about modernism being like right wing now this is the I don't care what someone says about Proust 
Proust didn't see life the way this guy saw life. Oh, you know, it shows the way a person think one person thinks. Oh, it shows motivation. When you read this, you get the feeling you're actually hearing people talking. And when you read other parts of it, well, or interspersed with people talking, you get the feeling you're hearing people, at least two people, no, three. Leopold Bloom, Stephen Dedalus, and Leopold Bloom's wife, Molly Bloom, in the last chapter. You get the feeling you're hearing people talking to themselves. This guy saw life. And how would I characterize his politics? Oh, extremely! No, not extreme. I'm talking about Joyce. I'd say something like wishy-washy liberal. Something like pro-Semitic. And if you're not wishy-washy liberal nowadays, and if you're not pro-Semitic nowadays, I have no use for you. I don't care if you style yourself as right-wing, left-wing. I don't care if you style yourself as green. I've got no use for you. Are Do you some there? reading. You have ten minutes if you want. I've had enough of those idiots. <laughs>